Hi guys, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias. Welcome back to my channel. I want to thank you all so, so much for your comments regarding the last video that I posted talking about the difference between foot drop or drop foot and spasticity and why they are somewhat related but also very different. Um, I got a lot of great feedback as far as other things that you guys want explained and also what to do and how to treat spasticity because it definitely seems like a very common problem. It's a problem that I see regularly and I think it's super common as far as a post-stroke impairment but also the feedback that I get from the online groups that I'm in and the Facebook groups it seems like it's pretty much universal. Not only is it a common problem but it's also a very frustrating problem. I can tell that just in the comments and the questions that I get that people are very frustrated. It impacts their walking, it impacts their ability to stand, and it impacts your ability to kind of move away from an assistive device. So I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into what causes this. So spasticity, now that we've kind of differentiated the two terms of foot drop versus spasticity. Spasticity usually occurs if you have damage to your upper motor neuron system. So that would include your brain or your spinal cord, your lower motor neuron system is any part of your nervous system outside the spinal cord. So let's say someone just had a peripheral nerve injury. So they just injured one nerve then that would be a lower motor neuron and it usually just affects one muscle or one group of nerves that ultimately control a group of muscles that perform one movement. And as I had stated, spasticity is due to uh, an injury to your brain or your spinal cord. And it basically causes muscles to react involuntarily. So, so spasticity is an involuntary contraction that can occur either if a muscle is stretched too quickly. So one way to look at this is kind of like a recoil response, I guess. Like if you stretched a muscle too quickly, like it would automatically contract. That's one way. So a quick stretch can cause a muscle to contract involuntarily. And that'll be important, and I'll get to that when it comes to ankle spasticity. It can also be due to stress. That can be physical stress. That can be emotional stress. It can also happen if there is an overwhelming stimulus in the environment. That could be a sound. That could be an unusual touch on the skin or an unusual sensation on the skin that your body is not ready for or not used to. That can cause a muscle to go into an involuntary contraction. Pain can also cause a muscle to involuntarily contract. And in my experience, spasticity worsens with disuse. So why is all this important to all of you who are suffering from spasticity? So today we're just going to focus on the ankle because that is the area where I get the most questions is how do I prevent my foot from turning in? How do I improve my walking when my foot is always rolled to the side? So that's what we're going to go over today. And as I had stated in the previous video, the number one proven way that I find to be the most effective is weight bearing and not making an activity too difficult. So making an activity too difficult or asking your body to do something that is more challenging than it is capable of, that's almost like a stress response. So a lot of times that causes a spasm or that causes a muscle to involuntarily contract. So I always see people trying to push the envelope a little bit and you know, working harder and harder is gonna make them get there faster or quicker or it's going to get the muscles stronger and probably before your stroke in your life that was true but with spasticity unfortunately that doesn't work so i always take patients backwards a little bit sometimes that's a little bit frustrating for them let's say they walk into my clinic without an assistive device but they're walking on the outside of their foot and their knee is hyperextended. they are having an involuntary plantar flexion and inversion at the foot 
and that is also causing their knee to pop backwards. So I sometimes will go backwards. In therapy, we go back to standing versus gait training, and that is to make the activity easier to decrease that stress response that the body is having. The other thing that I find most effective, in addition to grading an activity or putting an activity at the difficulty level that the body is capable of handling, is weight bearing. I cannot stress this enough. And to be honest with you, I have some of the most hardest working patients in my clinic that would do any exercise that I tell them to do when they go home. And when I ask them, how much time did you spend just standing? A lot of times that's the answer I get. They'll have worked their core, they'll have worked their uninvolved side, they will have done squats, they will have done all these other things. And I, when I ask them, how much time have you, did you spend standing? Because most of my patients, they have a standing program where literally they just work on loading that leg slowly. Still zero. And these are the most, these are the most motivated of motivated of patients. And I get it. You're not doing anything. So it feels like, how can I be making any progress if I'm not doing anything? Well, just like when you wake up in the morning and you flip the lights on and you kind of squint because that light is traumatic after not having light all night, throwing activities at your body that are more challenging than your body is used to or it can handle at the time it's like, it's like that bright light, your body just kind of recoils. So you need to go back and introduce these challenges in a controlled progression where your body can slowly tolerate more and more and more standing without your foot and your ankle feeling like it needs to plantar flex and invert because it's just too much for your body. So. That is the next video I'm going to be showing. I know a lot of you have commented and you all have great ideas and I'm definitely going to get to all of them. But stay tuned later this week. I'm just kind of throwing a little teaser out there that I'm going to be going over a standing progression. How to progressively put more and more weight on your involved leg in a way that is not going to make the foot plantar flex and invert in a way that'll put the majority of your body weight in, in the right place. That'll actually help to dorsiflex that ankle instead of plantar flex and evert that foot instead of having that inversion response. And then if I'm going to teach you how to stand on your leg on a flexed knee. So for all of you out there that see yourself in the mirror and you are locking your knee out when you stand on it, you're going to learn how to stand on a flexed knee. So definitely get excited. It's really late right now, but I wanted to get this video out just to prepare you all. Keep sending me the suggestions though, because I'm going to get to all of them. I love them. A lot of times I feel like I've covered everything and then that last video just kind of opened the floodgates as to the things that you guys still want to know more about. So definitely keep them coming. I will get to all of them. I am keeping the list, but I'm kind of prioritizing them as to what seems to be the most valuable or the most critical to the greatest number of people. And sure enough, multiple comments and private messages on how do I stop my foot from inverting. So stay tuned. That'll be later this week. So get excited for that. If you haven't subscribed or you haven't turned your notifications on for my channel, definitely do that. Comment below if you have any questions in preparation for the video. And yeah, you all will see me again in a couple of days. You all have a great evening.